Obviously, looking at hearing that news, um, just the approach to knowing you're playing the Nuggets, defending the NBA champs, and you're not going to have Booker out there with you in a, obviously a, an important game in terms of people wanting to see the game. So, well, yeah, we just got to continue playing our game. You know, guys been in and out all year. We just got to figure out ways to win, and we got to continue scoring at a, you know at a high clip like like we have been. Figure out ways to play faster and uh, and defensively just get after it a little bit more and get a little bit more scrappier like we are. And, and I think we'll figure out ways to find wins. I'm curious, looking at Bradley, we haven't seen him obviously since he went out. How maybe we speak to maybe his progress? It looked like he looks. Clearly better than he did when he left. Yeah, I mean, I let him speak on that, but uh, you know, from the look of it, you know, he's looking definitely looking better, and uh, you know, hopefully we have him out here on the court, you know, sooner than later. What challenges do does Jokic just provide with with this team and just going up against him with his name? Yeah, you know, he's a guy who can do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, he can pass, he can score one on one, and uh, you know, he almost plays really perfect basketball. And uh, for us, we gotta we gotta you know. Uh, we got to make it tough on them, tough on them, tough on them, you know, offensively, defensively, and uh, you know we got we got ways to strategize against them. How do you make it tough on them? Make it tough, you know, being physical, not making easy catches, and uh, you know you just don't want him to have that combination of scoring and, and assisting, which is you know that's what he does best. Well, it's early on. We're just we're starting to hit our strides, getting familiar with one another, and uh, you know the one the key is just having the chemistry, and we're we're getting there. And um, you know, there's always going to be bumps in the roads uh, down the road, you know, with health or whatnot. But um, where we're at, you know, I was just saying these last seven eight games have been encouraging. What is that process like with you know all the players on the team learning the match and learning the well, yeah, things take time. You know, people forget. New coaching staff, a lot of new players, so um, and you know, a lot of injuries. So uh, this might be the worst that you've seen early on this season. So we're just we're just looking forward to trying to get better and better, and uh, things should get better as the season goes along. You've talked about your early ball drives before. Nas is another guy that has put his head down. Yeah, he's been playing very well, knocking down the shots, getting to the getting to the rim, and uh, and also rebounding, which is that's definitely what we need. And uh, we just need him to continue doing that, and it's, it, and it helps our team a lot. You've played with and against Yusuf for quite a few years. What what do you think about his game? What's it? Uh, I think he's the guy that we need for this kind of team. You know, he moves moves the ball very well. He rebounds, and uh, and he can score one on one when he. Feels like he needs and has to, and uh, so I think he fits very well for our team. Good, good, and you know, good player and good compliment to our team. Good, 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 good. Is there a silver lining to sort of some of the injuries that you guys have had to navigate to this point in terms of opportunities for other guys? Um, I would say you know, chemistry-wise, you know, it's always good to have everybody together, but it also helps our team, you know, as far as getting guys that might not play to, to get a chance to get that experience. So. Uh, so it gives us a chance to, for everybody to step up more, and uh, but but um, of course, chemistry-wise, you want to figure out how we can piece it all together when everybody's there. As this thing is starting to come together, Vogel is getting a little bit more buzz, at least naturally, in terms of his system. What have you kind of gleaned from him? Yeah, we're just—it's all about learning his system, and of course, we're going to get better along the way. And you know, it's still early in the season, so I expect to to be even better and better, and. Uh, so it's it's definitely a little different, but but uh, we get the grasp of it. Eric, how do you like the three guard look to start the game? Are they Grayson obviously going to come in the back? How do you like that? Well, you got a lot of guys that you know me and him have a lot of experience playing on you know uh, on winning teams in our past. So we kind of know. I think we complement them well to the guys because we can shoot and try to make the right decisions, but also want those you know whether it's Book, Katie, or Brad to make sure they always. Um, you know, play well because we're always trying to make the, the right plays, but also find ways to be aggressive as well. What did you learn from the Toronto game? I mean, they have a lot of length, and you know, Denver has some length too. So, what have you learned in adjusting to those types of teams with your line? Well, I mean, to me, we didn't we didn't get a chance to really, you know, kind of play our game. But you know, things happen, and uh, but tonight we're here at home. It's, it's different. We know who, what we're up against, and uh, we just got to figure out a 
figure out ways to just play our game and uh, take away some of the things they do best. I'm curious, how do you think you've learned from Devin Booker in the short time you've been with the this season? Anything you've gleaned from him? Just... Well, you know, early on in his career, he's just been really a straight-up two-guard, and uh, now he's being more of a playmaker, which is I knew, you know, he would have career eyes in almost out of every category because because uh, you're going to be harder to guard when you're when you have the ball in your hands, playmaking a lot more, and because he already has the skill of you know shooting and creating his own shot. But when you're being a playmaker, you're almost going to be unstoppable to stop. When you, when you hear people say that the uh, Suns don't have a point guard, what do you, what do you think? Of I mean, to me, if you just have a point guard, you know, you're just going to have a guy that's in the middle of the floor, just standing there. But it'd be good to uh, always, because on every team, every some of your top players on the team, they're going to have the ball a lot regardless. So you either want them to make a play or, or um, you know, score or make it a play for someone else. So that's just what we need. And because uh, and uh, other than them, you got to have shooters across the board. So that helps a lot too. So maybe congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Father. Man, it's the best feeling I ever had, man. I've done a lot of, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to achieve a lot of things that I'm proud of, but that's definitely the proudest moment I've had. So um, I was just glad to have the team support, uh, you know, for letting me, you know, do what I had to do. And I was grateful I was able to get there in the nick of time. So it was, uh, it was just a great, it was a great situation for me. So obviously you got there in time for the actual play. Barely. Like, I'm talking like running through the door. And like, she's pushing, like I'm talking like, walk in, doctor's like, we couldn't hold on any longer. <laughs> we trying to make her wait. And I walked in there and then the baby was out and 20 minutes later, like it was crazy. So I made, if I were to turn left and I was supposed to go right, I probably would have missed it. But, uh, you know, just very blessed to be able to make that, and, you know, experience that moment. Where were you when you got to work in those was in New York. I was in New York. Uh, she called me, it was probably like 10.30 New York time. She was like, you know, I'm just letting you know some contractions happened, but just be on standby. And then at about 11.30, she was like, you need to you need to come back. So I'm looking up, trying to find flights and I'm calling every private jet company I know of. And they're like, oh, we trying to figure it out. But uh, thankfully I had somebody that was able to come through for me, found a plane for me, was able to get out there, get out of there with like an hour and a half. So um, yeah, just was on the plane, just, Texting my mom like, you know how much, how many centimeters dilated is she? Like, she's like, my mom like, where you at? How far you is? All that stuff. But it was, it was, uh, it all worked out. So it was cool. Her name is Brielle Calise Little. Brielle Calise Little. So um, yeah, man, beautiful little baby girl. So just super happy about it. How's the sleep? Uh, first two nights is rough. I mean, the first night in that hospital was no sleep. Back was, back was stiff. And I was like, I'm better off just staying awake than sleeping in this little bed slash chair thing. Uh, and the second night was just tough because, you know, she was trying to eat throughout the night. So, but then, you know, the last couple of nights, you know, I kind of had to move some things around, you know what I mean? Especially last night, we had to, you know, come, come up with a plan for me to, you know, get my rest, especially on game nights, uh, you know, so I could perform. But, um, so I, I got some good rest last night. Yeah, I'm already a strong dude, so I'm eager to see kind of what that looks like for me. So we're going to see in the next, I don't know how long it takes to come in, but <laughs> y'all see me throw somebody on the ground today, uh, y'all know what happened, so. Tommy, any of your teammates give you advice for it? Yeah, um, you know, I've been talking to Damian Lee a lot about it. Um, he's been a, a huge support for me throughout this process. Just, you know, he has a couple kids and he just had a daughter a few months ago, I believe, and just giving me advice and, you know, just, I think my biggest thing was asking guys kind of how to navigate playing and being a dad. Like, you know, it's, it's a different type of thing. And, you know, I'm young and I don't really, nobody gives you a guide on how to be a parent, but um, especially being a parent and trying to perform at a high level is, um, is a tough challenge. But, um, you know, I've had a lot of support. You know, the coaches have kids. I've been talking to Frank a lot about it, Coach Fizz. So, you know, I just be getting a lot of advice, man. Just, um, you know, people giving me a lot of their experiences and talking to my parents about it. So everybody been very helpful for me. What is Frank said specifically for the advice? Man, he uh, specifically, we just talked, we was just talking before I came out here. 
he was just telling me YouTube is my friend. Um, you know, leaving the hospital, I had to put the baby in the car seat and I didn't know how to work no car seat. And ain't nobody was helping me. I'm on YouTube and I'm like, and I'm stressing. We're trying to get out of here. The baby crying. I haven't slept in two days. It's just, it was a lot going on. But I um, ended up getting it figured out between YouTube and asking the nurse. So um, it all worked out. This is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I mean, hopefully it gets a little easier, you know, but man, you know, once you learn it, you know, now I know how to work the car seat. So that's one less issue that I got to worry about. So um, I'll just get better with time. Changing the diapers has definitely been an experience for me. Uh, I ain't never changed a diaper before, but uh, I changed my first diaper yesterday. So that was a milestone. So yeah, just, just continuing to learn and continue to get better. Do you feel like the adrenaline is somewhat wearing off or do you still feel it, you know, from this whole experience? Nah, man, I'm just like, it's weird. Like, you know, people tell you about how it feels to have a kid and, you know, I used to always be like, oh, whatever. But, you know, once, once she was born, it's just like, I definitely understand, you know, about that, you know, that unconditional love. And every time I'm not with her, like, even right now, I'm just like, I can't wait to get home. Like, it just, you know, look at her and stuff like that. But... Um, it's, it still feels a little bit unreal, like having just a little person and just thinking about like we were all those little people at one point and looking at like just how we are all able to communicate and just drive and just do like stuff that people do, you know, and at one point we didn't know how to do anything and our parents, you know, nurtured us and took care of us for us to be able to be in those positions. But um, so it's a real surreal moment. Uh, I have so much respect for women after watching that birth. I can't, my mind was blown. I can't, I, I don't even, I was just like, how is this gonna happen? I don't even know how this baby's gonna come out of there. But somehow it happened. But and I just, I had to look at my mom and give her a nice big hug. Like, you, like shouts out to you. Cause uh, I couldn't have went, I don't know, like, I would've had to tap out. Like that's crazy. But, um, but yeah, it was a really, just a really cool moment for me and my family. Does she come in above average length or anything? Like, do we see athlete already? Uh, she has long, she has long feet <laughs> and like long fingers. Uh, my lady has like relatively long wingspan. I have super long arms, so she look, she look like she has like an athletic body type already <laughs> a little bit. But, uh, but now nah, she wasn't like abnormally tall or anything. She was about an average size, but her fingers and her like her feet were uh, pretty long. So we're gonna see. You consider this a charm life? I mean, you've gone from being a one of the top prospects coming out of high school, going to North Carolina, which is you know basketball nirvana, as they yeah. say, and you know it's a one and done. And then of course you were in Portland, and then you're, now you're here on a yeah. basically a, considered a playoff uh, championship contender. Yeah, man, like it's and your birth. Yeah, like it's and like I was saying earlier, like I've been in games where I got to hit free throws with the game on the line, take big shots. You know, and putting that baby in that car seat was the most nerve wracking thing I had to do at all of that. Like, I was like shaking, like, just because she's so little. And I'm like, you know, I think the biggest thing is my I'm, my hands are so big, and I just feel like I'm like, it just feels a little bit awkward for me. But, um, you know, just trying to be so fragile with her and so careful. But, um, but yeah, like, like I said, that, that's the highlight of my life so far, man. So um, I'm just grateful that I was able to make it. and. You know, I'm gonna continue to do my thing, you know, provide for her and continue to make her proud. So I'm just excited, you know, for the journey of it. How much are you looking forward to getting back on the floor because you've been playing your best ball uh, in this recent stretch? Uh, super excited. Um, you know, that Toronto game was tough. Um, I definitely felt like that was a game they could have specifically used me in, just specifically the Raptors, just kind of how their team is constructed. I think that was a game I could have been, you know, very helpful in, but. Um, at the end of the day, you know, there's something that was there's something I had to take care of. I think which everybody understands, but um, you know, I was working out. You know, that next morning I didn't sleep, but I was back in the gym 7:30 a.m. and was getting my workouts in. So I'm gonna be ready to go tonight and uh, yeah, ready ready to get a win tonight. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, staying. I think you know, for in the league, especially on a team like this, uh, you got to be you got to be able to stay ready. Um, you know, at full strength, 
you know, there's going to be guys who are good enough to be rotation players who may not be playing. Um, but you can't take that as a as an insult. You have to just understand, you know, kind of what the situation is, and you know, make sure you stay in shape. Make sure you continue to work on your game because, as you can see, guys go down, guys twist the ankle here and there. Like you're gonna have to be ready to go on any given night. So uh, you know, I just have the right mindset. Um, you know, and I've been doing it my whole life, and I've been relatively experienced in the NBA with that type of stuff. So. Um, just continue to do the same things that I've done before I got to the league, you know, going to the gym, getting my extra work in, making sure I'm top of my nutrition, all that type of stuff, just so that way, you know, if I'm out of the rotation and my name is called, I'll be ready to, you know, get fit in seamlessly. And I think I've just been doing everything, um, you know, rebounding, bringing energy, hitting shots, doing my thing defensively. So just continuing to do that type of stuff. What's the transition been like to a new team and new teammates and new coach? Uh, it was hard. Uh, I think especially what was hard was the timing of it. Uh, like two days before training camp, like I couldn't, it was an awkward time, like as opposed to those summertime trades or even like in season trades are already in the swing of playing basketball. But like, you know, that specifically, like working with the team all summer and then like two days before trying to move and then like training camp on Monday and I'm trying to look at houses and we ain't got no off days. Like it was just tough, you know what I'm saying? But. As time went on and things kind of slowed down and as we got into the regular season, um, I was able to kind of get more comfortable and find a spot because I'm the type of person, like, if I'm not, if I'm, like, chaotic off the court, like, it's hard for me to, like, be poised on the court. You know, I didn't have a house. I was moving from Airbnb to Airbnb. Like, it's tough, you know what I'm saying? So as I got settled off the court, I feel like I was able to, you know, be my best self on the court. and. I just kind of compiled on each other, and I just got more and more comfortable. So it's been cool. Two things. When was the baby born? She was born on Monday. Okay, so yeah. Monday. And then for you, Katie's having year scoring camp rivals those types of numbers. What have you learned from watching him? Man, uh, you know, Katie was my favorite player growing up. So it's <laughs> being able to play with him has just been like an honor, you know, truly. And uh, man, I, I feel like you know the stuff that he. He has taught me. I don't know if it's applicable in a sense because I feel like some of the stuff that he does is only stuff that I feel like he can do. But, you know, just his approach, um, you know, like in warm-ups, everybody's, you know, shooting shots, but he's going like full speed through these one dribble pull-ups. And there's like balls flying all over the place and guys all over the place, but he's still detailed on what he's doing before the game. And I think that's something that allows him to be consistent, you know, offensively game in and game out. And I see the work he puts in before shoot arounds. And it just, you know, reassures you that none of this stuff is by accident. You know, guys really put time into their craft and it pays off. Can you spell your daughter's name for us? B R I E L L E. Brielle. Based off her question, Katie only needs 17 points to move to the top 10 all time in scoring tonight. So, what does that mean just for you to be? And it feels like it's already reached so many milestones yeah. this season. So, what does it mean to be a part of this? Uh, it's, it's amazing, man. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to play with Carmelo, who I think is 10th right now. So is he about to pass Melo or Moses? I think he's about to pass Moses. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've had the opportunity to play with Melo and now the opportunity to play with KD. Two guys who have been able to touch that threshold of top 10 all-time scoring is, I don't know how many people have been able to do that. Right. You know, to be, be around that kind of greatness and you know, Damian Lillard is probably on his way to that type of realm. So just being able to learn from these guys and share the court with these guys, uh, that's not something I take for granted. And, you know, I, I give him his flowers because he deserves them. And, you know, he's a great player. He's been consistent. He's done his thing year in and year out. And, you know, despite how the media may try to portray him at times, like, I have the utmost respect for him. So I'm super, super happy of him, for him, super proud of him. And uh, I'm just excited to watch his greatness continue to unfold. One last question with Brielle, back to that. Um, you know, you said it was nerve-wracking compared to playing, but yeah. how has maybe being a dad now changed the game specifically for you? How do you look at it differently at all? Three days in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's kind of <laughs> like... probably keep changing. It brings a sense of peace, a sense of peace a little bit, like, not to say that, like, I don't care about what happens on the basketball court, but, like, I don't in the sense of, like, as long as I'm, you know, there for my daughter and doing what I can to make sure that she's fine and everything else kind of like, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Good game, bad game, like I'm gonna be able to go home to her and just look at her little face and I ain't even gonna probably remember what happened. So like, 
I think it just brings a lot of peace to me. Um, and also like a lot of motivation as well. Like it makes me want to continue to go hard and you know to make her proud and you know give her the things that she wants out of life. So um, it's been it's been great.